Nothing truly beats hopping online with a friend in tow to dive into some co-op gaming goodness. Local couch co-op is, of course, also a blast. However, the ease of use to play with someone from around the globe online while sharing a great story, delightful gameplay, and plenty of laughs, and maybe even some tears, makes for some fun co-op times. Fortunately, PlayStation Plus's extra and premium tiers are here to save the day since they both offer myriad online co-op gaming experiences for two or more players. Welcome to Game Rant, everyone. My name is Jeffrey. In today's video, I'd like to highlight 10 top-notch online co-op games to play right now on PS Plus Extra and Premium. Now, it's worth noting that games do come in and out of the service each month, so an online game mentioned here might not always be available. With that said, let's dive into the list. Number 10, Outriders. Upon release, Outriders received positive but not glowing reviews. The game nails its combat, blending satisfying third-person gunplay with a diverse range of abilities that cater to its four classes. As a looter shooter, the title showers players with new items to ensure they always have something fresh to try out. This is one of those games that encourages people to constantly swap out gear rather than sticking to specific articles. And Outriders makes this process fun by offering loot that also happens to look good. While enjoyable solo, Outriders goes up a notch or two when played in a group. As obvious of a statement as that might sound, the game's combat system does genuinely improve when there are more folks around. Not only does this allow players to synergize their builds, but it also boosts the mayhem to a whole new level. The story is certainly nothing to write home about, but it should get the job done until players reach the endgame content. Number 9. Back for Blood Back for Blood is a first-person co-op shooter reminiscent of the Left 4 Dead series. Turtle Rock's project certainly wears its influences on its sleeves, which is hardly a terrible thing considering the market isn't flooded at all with these sorts of titles. Back for Blood has solid gameplay and visuals, along with a card-based customization system that permits players to tweak their loadouts. The differences between Back for Blood's playable survivors aren't skin deep either. Each character has unique traits and default weapons, which encourages teams to craft parties consisting of survivors that bring the best out of each other. Even though it isn't a masterpiece and has had a fairly short lifespan for this type of project, Back for Blood is more than good enough to keep a group of friends engaged for a few hours. Number 8. Warhammer Vermintide 2 a popular first-person action game, Warhammer Vermintide 2 is celebrating its five-year anniversary in 2023. Despite its growing age, Fat Sharks' release is still reasonably active, and it is arguably the best action-oriented Warhammer game of the last decade or so. Vermintide 2 pits the heroes of Ubersrek against wave after wave of rat-themed enemies, showering them with loot if they manage to survive. While the vanilla version only has 13 missions, plus 4 extra from free updates, the stages are meant to be repeated endlessly as players upgrade their classes and weapons. Vermintide 2's 5 playable characters are wildly different from each other, ensuring most people find someone who suits their preferences. Number 7. Returnal Housemark knows a thing or two about co-op. Dead Nation, Rezogun, and Alien Nation all make good use of the feature, and they support both local and online connections. The developer's most recent project, Returnal, didn't launch with multiplayer, but an online two-player co-op option was added as part of the Ascension update. Thanks to this addition, players can now join forces to take on the game's roguelike challenges, and there's the option to use a public or private server. Returnal is challenging, like really challenging, and co-op doesn't necessarily make the experience easier. However, it does introduce a revive option into the gameplay loop, granting players a much needed second chance. Otherwise, co-op provides essentially the same core experience as solo runs, albeit with two Selenes rather than just one. As the base package is certainly fantastic, the same can be said about Returnal's co-op. Number six, Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight is the most famous asymmetrical multiplayer game on the market, and that seems unlikely to change anytime soon. The game pits four survivors against one killer, with many of the available characters being based upon popular IPs, although there are of course a number and plenty of original creations too. 
While one side of the equation will not be cooperating with anyone, aka the killer, the survivor should try to work together since they are considerably weaker than any of the killers. That said, players are largely left to their own devices, so they can decide themselves whether they wish to prioritize communicating with others or not. Dead by Daylight is kind of a weird inclusion on this list as it's primarily advertised as an online multiplayer rather than co-op experience, which makes sense since matches are PvP rather than a group of players against AI. Nevertheless, it still works well as a co-op game for survivors, and it is among the best and most popular titles on PS Plus. Number 5. Darksiders Genesis Darksiders has led such a strange existence. Each entry tackles a different subgenre of action-adventure games, with some even venturing into RPG territory in the case of Darksiders 2. Darksiders Genesis marks the franchise's biggest departure to date, as the spin-off is a top-down hack-and-slash akin to something like Victor Vran or I guess even Diablo to an extent. The game is also clearly meant to be experienced in co-op since it features two playable horsemen, Strife and War. Solo players can swap between the two at will, which generally means they pick War when melee combat is the focus and then switch to Strife for ranged damage. In local or online co-op, two players take charge of either Strife or War, allowing the powerful horsemen to rain havoc simultaneously. Although they do not sync up all that much, Darksider Genesis' characters are both fairly deep and offer a good range of loadout options to keep things interesting throughout the campaign. Since Couch Co-op utilizes a restrictive split screen, online multiplayer is definitely the better option in this case. Number 4. Moving Out 2 A day one release added in August 2023 to PS Plus Extra and Premium, Moving Out 2 is an enticing co-op party game that takes an annoying real-life venture, aka moving, <laughs> and makes it aggressively entertaining. On paper, a game that revolves around moving furniture around sounds kind of tedious, and Moving Out 2 wisely does not eliminate the act's inherent frustration, but instead uses it as fuel for its fun physics-based shenanigans and hijinks. Players will need to work together to carefully and safely guide each item from one home to the next, and the routes can get pretty darn crazy as the campaign progresses. Moving Out 2 is divided into levels that are basically extended puzzles, and there is no attempt to adhere to reality. It's bonkers. Compared to the original game, which is also on PS Plus Extra, the sequel really goes for broke in its settings, opting to throw multi-dimensional travel into the mix, because why the heck not? This decision pays off beautifully and creatively. While solo play is certainly possible, Moving Out 2 is 100% designed for co-op shenanigans. Number 3. Trine 4 The Nightmare Prince Frozen Bites Trine is an easy recommendation for anyone looking for co-op-driven action platformer puzzle games. All the franchise's titles are certainly worth seeking out, however PS Plus subscribers will need to settle for Trine 4 The Nightmare Prince. Despite the number in its title, this entry can actually be enjoyed without prior knowledge of its predecessors, so newcomers can start here. Trine 4 follows three heroes, a mage, thief, and a knight, as they go on an epic fantasy-laden adventure that tests their might and teamwork. While certainly not devoid of combat, the campaign focuses instead on puzzles and platforming, with the former requiring creative use of the characters' abilities. Now, in solo runs, players can switch between the characters with the click of a button. In co-op, however, each user takes charge of one of the heroes. Trine 4 features two modes, Classic and Unlimited. The former ties three players to specific heroes, while the latter allows four users to swap to any character whenever they want. Number 2. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge They might not come around as often as they once did, but it is always an exciting day when a TMNT game launches and succeeds. And in a nice change of pace from most of the franchise's post-2000s efforts, Shredder's Revenge is also great. Looking to recapture the Turtles' beat-em-up glory days, Tribute Games basically created a game ripped right out of the 90s, albeit with enough modern touches for it to come across as a loving homage rather than just an antiquated throwback. Up to six players can join forces to take on the Foot Clan, and they are free to pick from the Turtles, Master Splinter, April, and even Casey Jones. Even at face value, that is more than enough solid selection for this type of game, and that is before taking into account each character's unique traits. 
all the playable figures bring something fresh to the table, so even solo players can enjoy replaying the campaign by switching between the characters. Now, gameplay-wise, Shredder's Revenge sticks fairly close to the standard beat-em-up formula. The characters have a limited but satisfying moveset, and the levels pack a considerable punch. The boss fights are quite difficult and require mastery of the combat systems mechanics in order to overcome them. The stages are overflowing with references to TMNT's past, and the nods cover many of the franchise's sides rather than its gaming history. Number 1. It Takes Two Designed specifically with co-op in mind, to the point of not even including a single-player option at all, It Takes Two might be the best co-op game on PS Plus, if not just in general. While the game supports couch co-op and shines brightly in this setting, it loses very little of its luster when experienced through an online connection. Combining gameplay and story seamlessly, It Takes Two follows a married couple who are on the brink of splitting up since they're not all that great at communication, which might be an understatement. Through the magic of fantasy, they wind up inhabiting their daughter's dolls, sending them on a surprisingly epic journey that comes with a side helping of personal growth. Hazelight specializes in co-op games, and the studio followed up the brilliant and gritty A Way Out with the more family-friendly but nevertheless mature It Takes Two. Both titles are must-play regardless of whether someone is into multiplayer or not, as they tell powerful and well-written stories, all the while incorporating enjoyable and creative gameplay sections. In the latter's case, It Takes Two shakes up its mechanics frequently throughout its campaign, ensuring things seldom feel repetitive. And there we have it everyone, 10 awesome online co-op games to check out right now on PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium. Thank you so much for checking out this video from Game Rant. Have a truly wonderful and happy day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.